Greetings fellow YouTube comrades and welcome back to my messy bench where copyright infringement is number one priority and today I'm hoping I'm not going to get sued by any crazy Russian hackers <laughs> Right, anyway, um, on with the actual video So, part two of repairing the Philips 170B6 with the stuck buttons on the front and We've got the board here again, obviously, and here are some buttons which I've bought. They arrived in the mail yesterday. Um, I bought 60 of them because they were so cheap. They were about nine cents each. In fact, they were exactly nine cents each. So, good supply I've got here. Um, little tactile buttons. They've got red actuators on them, but so what? You're not going to see. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I bought these from RS Components just in case anyone wants to know which was a lot cheaper than buying them from Jcar and Jcar wanted like a dollar fifty per switch so buying these from Jcar would have cost me about seventy five dollars compared to the five dollars eighty I paid from Iris Components so just think about that next time you go to Jcar <laughs> But enough of ranting on about how much of a ripoff Jcar is sometimes. Um, we'll just get into actually doing something useful with this uh, board. But first of all, I wanted to um, say how I've just changed the camera now, and hopefully you will have noticed um, an increase in quality over the previous video I did. I've got a webcam running now, a Logitech C930E, which unfortunately only works properly with FFmpeg under Linux. That's the only way I can get full HD at 30 FPS out of it, but it's good enough, it does its thing, and it's also got a wider um, angle lens on it too, which is good because hopefully my head isn't getting cut out of the shot <laughs> like it was before. Back to the actual repair, and hopefully you won't hear too much background noise, but someone's just started a um, weed eater up outside, so <laughs> apologies if you hear that in the background. Hopefully it won't be too loud. Anyway, um, there was something I wanted to show you about this board first. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous um, video about spark gaps, they've actually put, yes, they've put spark gaps um, on every single button. And you can see that maybe here next to the pads. Um, I'll do a close-up video. Sony DSC WX5, which is a pretty nice little camera. And hilariously, I can stick my uh, loop magnifier straight over the lens there and I get the ability to take some really good close-up shots. Looking at these um, spark gaps, I'm sorry this is going to be handheld so it might be a little bit shaky, um, but you can see how the uh, they've paid a lot of attention to detail and they've put spark gaps on every single button input, which is pretty cool and I suppose maybe even overkill for a consumer monitor, but um, I like it. It's nice. It's a pity it didn't really do anything about the fact that the buttons failed. <laughs> but, oh well. Better than nothing. I've never seen a monitor that had spark gaps on the buttons before. Finally, onto the actual repair. I'm going to replace all seven buttons because two of them turned out to be a bit dodgy and I figure, well, you know, could be that environmental factors have damaged them or could be a bad batch or whatever the problem was might as well just replace the whole lot at once because you don't really want the problem happening again in like a week or a month or something silly like that so got a bag of fresh buttons here and just open that would be a good start and so let's see we want seven of these Four, oh, five, six, seven. All right. And now that I've got the replacement buttons, I can put them in the board. So we'll just do that, and then I'll switch over to a different view while I solder them in, just in case you want to see that for fun. So here goes. These can all just fit in here very simply and 
and of course the um, holes are all cleared out nicely because I used a vacuum desolder tool and you know even though it's plated through hole there's no problem so that's really useful so there we go put all the new buttons in there so I've just got to solder them in I'm just about to solder the buttons in and I'm using a Duratec TS1560 which is from JCAR and which strangely looks like a Heco 936 but anyway um, got myself some 6040 lead solder here because I can and because it's much nicer to work with than the um, lead free stuff and if you like lead free that's great for you but I like lead solder anyway so here we go Remember, put the iron on first, let it heat up a little, add the solder, take the solder away first, take the iron away. If you take the iron away first, like so, okay, I didn't do it, but let's try it, see if we can mess it up. Put the iron on. If you take the iron away first, ah, solder's stuck to the board, you see. So you need to um, make sure you always take the solder off first. Iron goes on first and comes off last. Iron goes on first, comes off last. And of course if you're speedy at this, you can basically take them both off at the same time which is also perfectly fine and just because I can let's get a super hard close up on this <laughs> what fun Let's do another one. You can see on the other side how the solder's gone all the way through. And that's preferable because, it's, well, for a little button it doesn't really matter, but in high current applications you kind of want solder all the way through so that you don't um, have the via or the plated through hole taking all the current you kind of want something to actually um, you want the solder to take all the current and everything but yeah anyway so now that I've soldered in the buttons I've got to replace that capacitor I removed earlier now the capacitor I took off was probably just fine but reusing surface mount parts isn't really a great idea so I'm gonna have to put a new one on and I had to wait a couple of days to get one um, in the mail because RS didn't have any in stock locally so I had to get one from Sydney anyway it's an 0603 part 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and <clears throat> hopefully I'll be able to solder this by hand on camera <laughs> which will be fun anyway so I've cleaned the pads um, and made them all flat with some solder wick because you really want them to be as flat as possible if you've got any bumps of solder on it on pads like this, you're just going to be a mess. The part won't sit flat and you'll just go crazy trying to tack it on and everything. So you really need to get everything really clean. So the first step after cleaning is to add some flux. So we put some flux on here. Get everything all good. And now I take the capacitor. I'm using an 0.8 millimeter chisel tip on my iron by the way so we take the capacitor place it on the pads here and at this point we don't actually put any extra solder on apart from the solder that's already on the board because that would make things harder so so holding the capacitor in place we come in with the iron and just slightly reflow the solder that was on the board and that will uh, tack the part onto the board there so now it's not going to fly around if we move the board 
Then we've got to add some more flux because the flux we just put on is now all evaporated. And now we can do the other side of the capacitor. And this is where we actually get the solder now. So clean your iron tip, make sure there's nothing on there because this has got to be really clean. And we come in on the opposite side that we just tacked on and put a tiny bit of solder there and just point out that you put the um, solder on first in this case when doing the surface mount parts I'll uh, just do that again because it didn't take the first time okay so now we go to the other side and first we got to put some more flux on because again the flux has evaporated from doing the previous joint and now we can um, reflow the original side that we attacked that we tacked before. And there we go. Unfortunately that's probably not as good as I um, could have done without the camera in the way, but hopefully it uh, shows you how this is done. Okay, and now it's time for the moment of truth. We'll see if this thing actually works now that I've fixed it, apparently. So, we've got to put the board back on. Um, I've got the thing out of the case because um, it's easier to plug this button board in um, this way. So, just plug it in like this. Got this one connector here, main connector, and little grounding one. Gotta make sure that's on there. Let's see, I've got to use pliers for that one. Let's get that on there. Alright, so now I've got the um, case here. I'm back part of the case. After unsticking the panel from the bench because of all the double sided tape around the frame that made it stick really well to the pinch top um, I can now put this back into the case here that seems all good okay now plug the speakers back in because you never know might be one of those bizarre audio amplifiers that blows up if there's no speaker connected to it. Although I doubt it, but you know, let's just let's not take chances here. Okay. So that should just go in there. Go like that? Yeah, okay. I'm just putting the button board back in so it doesn't fly around while I'm testing it. But um, I'm not going to put the case back on straight away because obviously if we do that, Murphy's Law means it won't work. So we'll just test it to start with, with the case out of the way and just see how that goes. Yeah. So now I'm feeding it a signal source from my other computer over there, um, which is currently recording the video for this actually. Uh, I've just got a second desktop with a wallpaper on it. So if I turn this on, we should be able to see a picture. So let's see what happens. We got a green light and ah we got a picture okay so that's a good start um, everything looks good we didn't destroy the panel so that's that's great um, so now I've figured out which of these buttons this is OSD so that probably brings up the menu okay cool the menu works does up and down work yep you can scroll through everything um, Try changing the brightness. Can we change the brightness? Whoops, hang on. Um, how do you select stuff with this? Not sure. Hang on, let me use. Oh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, it's um, left and right, and that seems to work. And what else have we got? Um, up and down work. Uh, it should be. No, no, it's automatic. Okay, that worked too. Cool, so it seems like everything's working. Great. That's a lot better than it was. So I'll just um, 
put the panel, put the front back on, um, put the front back on, and once I've done that, once I've put that all together, um, yeah, I'll start putting that together. Okay, so so we've just skipped ahead a little bit because um, something messed up with the recording while I shot the previous segment. Um, so I'm not going to bother taking the stand off again and then screwing it back on because that's a bit pointless and it's just screwing on the stand, which isn't that interesting. Um, so I've tested everything out and checked the speakers and the headphone jack and all that, and everything seems to be working just fine. So. Um, yeah, just do a full check of everything and it's all good to go, so. Uh, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, I would play back some stuff through the speakers, but then I'd probably get a copyright infringement notice or something and the video would get taken down, so too bad. Um, you'll just have to take my word on it that these speakers work. Uh, but yeah, what else is there to say? Nothing much, really. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you learnt something, or I hope you can tell me something that I might be able to learn. I've probably got some improvements I could make to this um, whole setup and general stuff, so if there's anything that's really terrible, just let me know, because I'd really like to um, do some more of these, I think, and hopefully do them decent enough that people are actually going to find them useful. So. If there's anything that needs improving, um, just let me know. Thanks. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it was good enough that you'll be back for more. And yeah, that'd be cool.